Summit Fever is the new movie from Julian Jill Bay. Rise of the Foot Soldier, he made that movie. Plastic, he made that movie. Will Polter. But this is his new movie. It's another mountaineering, climbing, survival movie. We've had a few like survival films like this as of late because we just seem to love them. Um, and we are going to be talking about Summit Fever in this episode. Folks, I am back. This is Nerdly Out Loud, the official channel of nerdly.co.uk, your favourite home for all your news, reviews and exclusive interviews. We like to cover everything from the big budget to the low budget to the no budget, with a special keen interest on the lower end of the scale. It's where my heart lives, it's where my heart lies, it's what I love to talk about and put out to you guys out there. So yeah, I mentioned that we do interviews. Julian Jill Bay, I've already done an interview with him about Summit Fever and some of his other stuff. It will be on the channel very soon, possibly before this, so check that out. If not, it'll be on after this, so again, come back for that. If you don't know how to come back for that, hit that like button, hit that subscribe, and ding that notification bell, because the notification bell will let you know whenever I drop an episode. Once you've watched this review and then watched Summit Fever, you can come back and watch the interview, because you'll have a snazzy little notification that'll tell you it's out. How does that work? It works great. But please do all those great things because that really does help us on the YouTubes in the algorithm and get us out there and let people know who we are, where we are, and how you can see us, which I would thank you from the bottom of my heart if I had one. As a joke, I do have one sometime. So let's not waste any more time and let's get into this review of Ryan Philippe starring and Freddie Thorpe. Those guys are in this movie. Let's talk about Summit Fever. <laughs> veteran amongst the climbing fraternity has been killed. His sponsors pushed him too hard, man. Demanding bigger, bolder, scarier routes. Me? Mwah. I'd like to get back to some good old-fashioned mountaineering. So Summit Fever tells the story of Michael, an adrenaline fueled mountaineering enthusiast. However, he's been out of the game for a little while due to the untimely death of his sister. Stuff and things kind of happen, he's drawn back into this and he's now at the foot of three of the biggest mountains ever, the uh, the Matterhorn, the Eiger and the Mont Blanc and he's going to start doing a little bit of climbing. Now there is a little bit of back and forth before he gets up there because he has his day job and he goes back to his day job without really going any further into the mountains but then he's like you know what I want to climb the mountains. That I, I love doing that stuff. So I'm going to go and do that. Of course, he is egged on by a loudmouth American played by Ryan Philippe, which would get anybody to climb any mountain. So he goes back. They end up climbing these three different mountains. But then, of course, stuff and things happen. This is a survival thriller. So we're going to get trapped up there. It's not the most original story about how we're going to progress. I mean, we've seen films like this before. We kind of know where it's going to go. We're going to get stuck up the mountain. It's all about braving the forces of nature and just trying to survive. We've seen this movie before. We've done this movie before. It's usually about how we go about it, though. How you're going to pull me into the characters. How you're going to make me care enough to see if they survive. And that's where this movie lives and breathes. There's a lot of drama in there. There's a lot of tension between our characters, but also in the struggle that Michael's having in his own mind, you know, because he doesn't really technically want to be up there. He kind of went up because he was sort of egged on and he's still dealing with the trauma and the PTSD of his sister's death. It's a lot to deal with when you're up a mountain and you're stuck. So yeah, there's not really much else I can say about the plot. There's not really much I can kind of give away. It's it's semi sort of based on a true story. Um, like I say, you've seen movies like this before. It's more about the performances it's more about how they made this movie. We'll talk about that in a minute. And it's more about that kind of thing for this film. That's where it earns its stripes and that's where it earns your respect. So let's just move into the cast and the crew. And I'm going to start with leading man Freddie Thorpe as Michael. And I'll, I have to start there because he's he's brilliant in this film. He made me believe 
made me get on tender hooks when when he's up there and everything like that. And you've got the goosebumps because you want this kid to survive. You know, he's been through enough, but Julian Gilby's going to like put him through some more. You may remember Freddy Thorpe from the Winx saga, which is on Netflix. I don't know if this means I've got to hand over my man card by admitting that I watched that show, but me and my daughter, my eldest daughter, Ruby, we watched it, we loved it. Second series is out, we are going to be sitting down and binging it soon. But yeah, Freddie Thorpe is brilliant in this film, and there's nothing you don't believe with him. And that is in part down to the fact that he learned to climb these mountains. He legitimately climbed these mountains. That's right, like before he got in onto set and did all i'm saying set it wasn't even a set they were in the swiss alps they were claiming these damn things um julian gilby and, and and freddie thorpe they were the two main guys up the mountain these guys actually claimed these mountains and actually did this and that's bloody scary and when you know that because i didn't know that going in but when you know that it makes sense a lot of those scenes you cannot recreate on a back lot and if you do it isn't going to look very good. It's going to look pretty pants, to be fair. But they went up there and they braved it and they did it. You know, like, obviously they didn't put themselves in too much harm's way. You know, you got insurance. you got to keep all your actors safe and your directors safe. Massive props to my man, Freddie Thorpe, for that. So, yeah. And Ryan Philippe as well. He did some of it as well. On to Ryan Philippe. He's... He plays the loudmouth American. He plays it brilliantly. We love Ryan Philippe. We're never going to say a bad word about Ryan Philippe on this show. I'm a big fan of him as an actor. If you haven't seen The Way of the Gun, check that movie out. Absolute banger. One of his best roles. Check it out. And he's great in this. He's doing what he needs to do. He's getting us to that point. He's getting us up the mountain. And then he's going to get us stuck up the mountain. He's going to Ryan Philippe the shit out of the movie. And I want to talk about the director, Julian Gilby. Like, I remember watching Rise of the Fruit Soldier. I loved that movie. Um, I, I watched Plastic, which we talked about the interview, and he didn't seem overly happy with the end results to that movie. And, and that's a shame, because I genuinely think it's a decent little movie. Is it amazing? No, but it's a decent little caper. I enjoyed it. And it's got some up-and-coming stars who, you know, they're going to be massive. Like, we'll pull us nearly there with Adam Warlock. I mean, huge props to the fact that Dude was up there. He was up in these mountains. He's done it before in his life. He's climbed mountains in his life. And now he's making a movie about mountain climbing where things are going to happen. Things that he's probably seen firsthand. Like, I don't know. Like, we didn't really get into that area. But he's probably seen things like this firsthand. He's definitely read about these things. And he definitely knows more than most about these things. Because it's a passion of his. And that's where this movie, for me, wins. It's it's passion. It's steeped in passion. You can feel every little bit of tension coming through the screen from these actors, from the camera work, from the fact that you are up this mountain because you can't fake that. You can't fake the funk when it comes to something like that. It's real and you can feel it and it's visceral. And that's what this movie is. It's very visceral. So what I did and what I didn't like Absolutely, I just, I like the vibe of this film. It starts off as a little bit of like a terminal velocity. Did I say terminal velocity? I don't think anybody's referenced that movie in the last 20 years. Point Break, uh, Fast and the Furious, kind of all these kids getting together. They're all going to climb this mountain. They're all going to have a good time and they're living their best lives. It starts off as that kind of movie and then rolls into the carnage, the nightmare and the chaos. And honestly, I like the way they've done it. I like the fact that you feel like you're up there with them. I love that because you are up there with them. And I mean, essentially the camera work becomes the other character in the movie uh, or another character in the movie. I like the fact that I didn't really know where it was going. It is loosely based on a true story, but I didn't know anything about that true story. So it's cool. Like I like that. And, and it's, it's quite harrowing what these guys go through and what these guys have to do to, to get through it, you know? Um, if you liked Touching the Void, the documentary Touching the Void, which I did like, I remember working in the video shop when that came out. If, if you like that, you're going to like this movie. Recently, we had The Fall, which was the one with the radio tower and two girls climb up it. If you like that movie, you're going to like this movie. Like any of those types of movie, you're going to like this movie, but it has some heart to it. It has an underlying story with the um, the, the brother and sister 
kind of dynamic. Obviously, we don't see much of the sister because she did. But um, Freddie Thorpe and um, Michael's um, thoughts on that and carrying that, you kind of feel that. And and that's that's a testament to Freddie Thorpe. He's done a great job here. Um, so I'm just going to get my final rating. And honestly, I don't think this movie does a lot wrong. I, I think this is a movie you definitely have to check out. I think it's a movie that needs to be seen, and I really hope it does. It's obviously not got a massive big release or anything like that, which is a shame. But um, if you see it, check it out, please. If it's in a theater, go and see it. If it's on Amazon Prime, Netflix, anything like that, please do check this movie out. I, you'll have a good time with it. You'll have a scary good time, but you'll have a good time. So for me, I'm going to drop a straight five on this movie. It's a five out of five for me. I love the way it was made. I love the, the way they've put themselves through the elements and the way Freddy Thorpe went out there and, and basically just started climbing, you know, Everest. Um, Julian does have an idea for a follow-up. I'd be interested to see what we do there. I'm thinking mountains and space. That's where you go next. Um, but yeah, check out the film. Please do check out the film. Uh, check out my interview with Julian. And honestly, it's, it's a good movie. It's a great movie. Like, I think you'll enjoy it. Please do check it out. Let me know in the comments what you think of this film. If you like it, let me know. If you didn't like it, let me know. We can have a conversation in the comments. That's where the discussion continues. But for now, I am going to go. My name has been Kevin Halden. This is Nerdly Out Loud, the official channel of nerdly.co.uk. Favourite British home for news, reviews and exclusive interviews. Summit Fever, it's a 5 out of 5. It's a really, really good, tense survival thriller. And I'm out. Hey.